listeners. Today we will be doing lifelong learning and motivation. When we talk of lifelong learning, so as learning is a continuous process and to learn we need to know what is education. Education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself as said by John Davey. So in its general sense, it is a form of learning in which knowledge, skills and habits of a group of people are transferred from one generation to the next through teaching, training or research. Education is at the heart of both personal and community development. Its mission is to enable each of us without exception to develop all our talents to the full and to realize our creative potential including responsibility for our own lives and achievement of personal aims. When we talk of education, so we can't skip the four pillars of education. Very first is learning to know, which deals with the cognitive skills related to the mind. Learning to do, which deals with the motor skills, the coordination of mind and body. Learning to live together, which deals with the sociological skills, how to behave with others, how to have social relationships and how to deal with other people. And last but not the least is learning to be, which deals with emotional skills, how to manage your emotions, how to manage your feelings and thoughts. Learning to know implies learning how to learn by developing one's concentration, memory skills and ability to think. Learning to do, it describes putting knowledge and learning into practice innovatively through skill development, practical know-how, development of competence. Learning to do, it describes putting knowledge and learning into practice innovatively through life skills, personal qualities, aptitudes and attitudes. Learning to live together. It involves the development of social skills and values such as respect and concern for others, social and interpersonal skills and an appreciation of the diversity of the world which is very very important these days as we are lagging all the social ethics and etiquettes. Learning to be, it involves activities that foster personal development, which includes body, mind and spirit, and contribute to creativity, personal discovery, and an appreciation of the inherent value provided by these pursuits. When we talk of lifelong learning, as the name implies, lifelong is something which goes on for a lifetime. Learning is a continuous process, we all know. So it is the ongoing, voluntary and self-motivated pursuit of knowledge for either personal or professional reasons. When we talk of the four key pillars of lifelong learning, very first and important is knowing the learner, that is self-awareness. How to know about self, how to introspect yourself and know about yourself. Then planning for learning that is self-management, how to manage yourself, how to manage yourself, your feelings, your emotions, your thoughts. Understanding how to learn, how we can learn the process of learning to understand what are the different techniques, how we can learn from the trivial things of life. And last but not the least is evaluating learning, that is self-monitoring. So after learning, it's very important to evaluate ourselves, how much we have learned and how much is left. Motivation. Motivation is a desire to achieve a goal combined with the energy to work towards that goal. 
we all agree that whenever we have a goal, we need to have a force to work for that. We need to have a slight push to work for that. So motivation is the value of outcome into the expectation of achieving it. When we always think about the result of what we have to achieve, then we usually get motivated to work much more harder and to put in more effort for that particular work. Motivation may be regarded as something which prompts, compels and energizes an individual to act or behave in a particular manner at a particular time for attaining some specific goal or purpose. There are some activating forces that push and pull an individual to move or act for achieving a specific goal. These activating forces are needs, drives and motives. Needs we all know are our requirements. Needs are general wants or desires of an individual. Though the number of individual needs is considered infinite, by some scholars, it can be divided into two broad categories, physiological or biological needs and socio or psychological needs. Physiological biological needs deal with the necessities of life, where the individual deals with the physical needs, things which are important to live. Socio-psychological needs deals with a person's behavior and his emotional management, how he deals with his mind and how well his body is coordinated with his mind and how well he deals with other people in society. Drives. As the name suggests, drive is something which takes you to your goal, which drives you. So a need gives rise to a drive. When, whenever there is a need, whenever there is a requirement for something, then there has to be a drive to achieve that particular thing. So it may be defined as an aroused awareness tendency or a state of heightened tension that sets off reactions in an individual and sustains them for increasing his general activity level. And drives can be primary or secondary. Motives. A motive works as a basic activating force behind a particular behavior. A need gives rise to one or more motives. Motive is a rather specific process which has been learned and is directed towards a goal. Types of motivation, when we talk of the different types, so we can talk into two different extremes. One is intrinsic and extrinsic motivation and the other is negative and positive motivation. Intrinsic motivation is something which comes from within the individual. When you feel motivated from inside, extrinsic motivation is something which you get from outside, which you get from the outside resources or the person, people or the situations outside in the environment. Negative motivation is something which leads to the negativity of doing the particular task and you get motivated seeing the negativity of that particular thing. And positive motivation is when you are seeing the positive results of a particular activity and you start working for that. Motivation is everything. You can do the work of two people. Instead, you have to inspire the next guy down the line and get him to inspire his people. So we can increase motivation always by helping others. Now, what motivates people? So whenever we talk of motivation, Whenever we need to work hard or whenever we are required to work hard, we always think of rewards. So there are two types of rewards, external rewards 
and internal rewards. External rewards, for example, the salary, the working conditions, benefits and the environment. Environment is the working environment here. And internal rewards, for example, the achievement, the responsibility, the recognition which you get, the feedback, which includes positive as well as the negative feedback, and learning and growth. Because as learning is a continuous process, so it is required for growth and development of an individual. Achievement. Recognize achievements through programs that showcase performers. So recognition is a must. Whenever you achieve something or as a teacher, your students achieve something, it's imperative to appreciate them and to recognize them for their achievements. Responsibility. Have volunteer programs and other programs that enable employees to showcase their responsibility towards each other and society at large because you are always responsible for your actions no matter how you feel as for the society if each and every individual starts thinking what will happen if I do such thing or I do a particular job when nobody else is doing it so if each and every person realizes his responsibility and completes his activity or action for which he is responsible, I think society will be a better place to live in. Recognition. Recognize winners through awards. Feedback. Follow a system of feedback and performance appraisal. That is the 360 degree system in which both the boss and subordinate participate. It's again a circle. Whenever you will get rewarded, you will get appraisal, you will work hard next time. And when you work hard next time, again you will get appraisal. Learning and growth give a lot of importance to training and skill development and have various training academies to cater to teachers from diverse backgrounds. Analyze training needs to recognize competency gaps and impart knowledge through customized training programs which enhance the various skills of teachers. I think teaching is far far lagging behind and we should put forward our foot in enhancing our skills and preparing our future generation for the better world. Skill is the ability coming from one's knowledge, practice, aptitude, etc. to do something well. Skills can be classified into general and specific domain, where specific domain skills would be useful only for a certain job. A particular specialized job need specific skills in general domain, time management, teamwork, self-motivation and other skills will be included. Learning is skill enhancement and skill enhancement will help in empowering us to take positive actions to protect ourselves and to promote health and positive social relationships. It typically uses a combination of cognitive behavior, which again relates to your mind, and problem-solving approaches, both of which are used to strengthen a person's positive skill development. One of the important role of a teacher is to motivate the students and to develop their skills. Because a teacher's word is like a line on a stone for a student. Strategies for motivating the students. We can become a role model for student interest. Get to know your students well. It's very, very important. Like for example, if you have 30 students in your class, it's very important for the teacher to know each and every student. 
to know the likes and dislikes of each and every student in the class to know what actually uh, make them angry or what actually uh, upset them because most of the time the students are with the teachers and it's very very important for the teacher to know each and everything about his student should use examples freely and the examples should be real life related to the real life situations so that the students could relate to it use a variety of a student active teaching activities where the students are involved in those activities be it a role model play or anything which includes the students in the class set realistic performance goals give them something to work on rather than just cramming answers to set and stereotyped questions place appropriate emphasis on the testing and grading because it's very important to evaluate if you do not evaluate you will not be ever able to improve yourself because you will not be able to know your shortcomings be free with praise and constructive in criticism if a student is not doing the desirable work in class you can in a way criticize him but then on the other hand you can just guide him how to construct something useful from that negative thing give students as much control over their education as possible let them decide let them be decisive let them make decisions don't impose your own decisions on them establish rewards for progress of students and use the power of positive thinking it's very very effective way of dealing with the students some suggestions to dealing to deal with the students in the class we should set challenging targets should clarify what we expect students to learn create a culture of continuous improvement wherein the student continuously keeps on improving and working hard and thereby learning new things improve the professional skills of teachers continue to target available sources raise public awareness so that everyone is equally aware of everything whatever is going on whether be it the field of education or be it our nation politics or whatever area we are talking of we should monitor progress towards achieving the demanding targets in the process of lifelong learning as the name suggests suggests it's lifelong so it will be carried on throughout your life and it is connected from one thing to the other because whatever you work for again that thing relates to the society and that further improves the society that enhance the society and then further improving our nation five step process to develop lifelong motivation identify and write down exactly what you want this is a small exercise which anyone can do just to develop a lifelong motivation so after identifying and writing down exactly what you want what are what are your desires write down why you want it what is the reason behind that then next develop the step by step plan basically the plan of action how you you are supposed to work about it what will be your first step what will be your second step then further uh, further steps take action on step 1 again you have to identify and write down exactly what you want and then reflect then adjust reflection is something whatever you are and the way you are behaving with others the way you are exposing yourself 
the way you are expressing yourself it reflects the way or the type of person you are so to conclude i must say being ignorant is not so much a shame as being unwilling to learn learning as i said it is a continuous process and each and every person is always learning in every walk of life whether we are commuting from one place to the other we are learning one or more things daily or we are talking to some other person maybe that person may be uh, less educated than you are but then also you are learning so much from him you learn from each and every person you are talking to whether it's a cobbler it's a carpenter or it's a plumber you always learn new things from them the way they do their work and you have to inculcate this habit of learning and you have to make sure that your students also inculcate this habit of learning and you should always be ready to learn you should always be ready to accept change and bring change to the society thank you so much <laughs>